Dr. Beth Secord, and I'd like to welcome you to Critical Thinking, and I'd like to give you an overview of how this course is structured and what our approach will be for this course. Traditional approaches to critical thinking focus on improving our conscious, deliberate um, reasoning by focusing on argumentation, logic, and formal reasoning tools. Um, now, this is the way that, that critical thinking has been traditionally approached, but because of uh, recent research in cognitive science, I have incorporated a, another stream to this traditional approach. And these are dual process approaches to critical thinking. Dual process approaches to critical thinking focus on um, research from psychology and other scientific studies about how uh, the human mind actually works. Dual process theories help us identify critical thinking mistakes that are common to all homo sapiens because of the way that our minds and brains developed in our very long evolutionary past. So um, the dual approach is um, that it turns out that we are uh, heavily influenced by our non-conscious, non-deliberative parts of ourselves, and this skews our ability to think critically. So if I go back a, back a screen, for a long time, people thought that we had um, easy access to this approach to critical thinking, or this easy way of um, doing critical thinking, just using argument, logic, and formal reasoning, right? But um, recent scientific discoveries, and when I meet recent, I'm like, uh, like since the 70s, um, have shown us that we are heavily influenced by unconscious processes that um, hijack our ability to um, apply those traditional critical thinking approaches. We are not aware of how our non-conscious biases, prejudices, and heuristics undermine our ability to arrive at true beliefs. So many people who think they're very logical and rational, and maybe they are in many areas, maybe they're great at personal finance, but then it turns out that um, their reasoning is hijacked by these unconscious areas, um, these unconscious processes in other areas of their life. So learning about how our mind works in this sort of dual process way is an important part of becoming a critic. Um, this will be our textbook, Thinking Fast and Slow by Daniel Kahneman. He won the Nobel Prize in economics and specifically in behavioral economics by challenging the idea that markets and people um, are rational in their decision making about um, how they're going to spend money, sp saving and spending. Um, and then all these, the invisible gorilla, how our intuitions deceive us. Um, here's another one, the hidden forces that shape our decisions, predictability and irrationality, um, and all these, the art of thinking clearly. These are all uh, recent, fairly recent books that discuss um, these unconscious processes that hijack clear thinking. Okay, so let me just tell you a little bit about what a dual process theory is. So um, there's an evolutionary explanation for these um, different ways of thinking, and that is that our system one um, developed first. So we share the system one with other mammals, supposedly. So the system is very old, it's more primitive in terms of evolution, and it is really, really, really good at what it does. Because um, if you think of it like a computer, it's on uh, version 1 million point oh. So it's just really efficient, it's fast. Um, and this is key to remember that its job is to keep us alive. So system one is there to keep us alive long enough to reproduce and um, give our offspring good chances at surviving. So that is its main focus. It's not necessarily to give us true beliefs about the world. So when do we tend to go wrong? Well, um, this system one adopts a certain strategy. Maybe 95% of the time, um, it will cause you to survive um, it, it, or increases the chances of survival um, compared to any alternative. Um, and it's not necessarily um, produce a true belief. Okay, so system one adopts heuristics or rules of thumb that tend to promote survival. And we'll talk a bit about this more coming up. Now, system two, on the other hand, um, is a newer system um, and is more recent in terms of evolution. Um, and it also does more of the chess, thinking, advanced math, 
um, probability. Things that computers actually do really well are the system two type um, activities. So it is more advanced in terms of, or it's more um, recent in terms of evolution. However, it is because it's new, it's just on version 5.0, version 10.0. It is not as refined as system one. So it has a lot of bugs in it. It's really slow, it's hard to use, it's effortful. Um, if any of you in the class are old enough to remember, it's like um, trying to, waiting for an essay to print out on one of the printers to go verp, verp or like it's like a dial-up modem really slow really hard to use um and it makes it makes mistakes too yeah um so the traditional approach to critical thinking um addresses this system so this is the conscious system so here look at this iceberg think of your system too as being um i don't know about percentages here um this is just like a visual. Um, let's not, don't be literal about 10% and 90%. But this part in your conscious, this part is visible and it's, and you're aware that you're using it. It's available to your conscious mind. That's what the traditional approach to critical thinking addresses is this top part. Um, the older system, system one, is going on in the background and you may or may not even realize that it's there and working and pushing your attention in certain directions. So this is all really fascinating. So you could imagine like just to, in a critical thinking course, just to focus on this top part. I mean, you would learn a lot of good skills and good tools, but you miss all the ways, all of these hidden unconscious processes that will um, affect what's going on in these top layers or sabotage it. Okay. So um, yeah, so both approaches are important to critical thinking. Traditional approaches to critical thinking focuses on this top part that we are consciously aware of. And dual process theories point out that we have a second part, um, second part of use that is worth understanding. That's a typo. Well, dual process theories that we have point out that we have a second part to us, a second part of the way we think that's automatic. We're not necessarily aware of it. And it's worth understanding because it um, it also affects our decisions, our beliefs, um, our aims, our goals, our perceptions. The structure of our so we're going to start with exploring what cognitive science and psychology have to say about how our mind evolved and how that affects our critical thinking. And we'll base this part on Daniel Kahneman's Nobel Prize winning work on fast and slow thinking parts of our minds and the biases and mistakes each system makes or don't work together. Okay, the second part of the course we're going to, or the middle part of the class, we're gonna focus on these traditional critical thinking methods. So that's what is the nature of truth, what are beliefs, what's knowledge, what's the difference between a claim and a true statement or a false statement. And then we'll look at deductive logic and the rules of inference. So um, when do premises add up to a, a conclusion that is um, that follows from those those claims or those premises and um, when is that um, that argument a sound argument? Okay, so that's the second part of our class. And then finally, in the last part, we will combine these two approaches um, for the last part, focusing on how the quick thinking of our mind hijacks sound inductive and scientific reasoning. So we'll look at inductive reasoning, and this pulls from um, this sort of um, the higher order mind, uh, math, probability, um, logic, um, scientific reasoning and probability, and how um, we often get these things wrong. Um, we, we will jump to conclusions or fail to consider other causes. We, so we um, con construct a, Kahneman does a great job of explaining this, but we construct a really nice, easy story about a cause and effect. And because that story sounds so good, we jump on board with that story, even though there might be another explanation out there and that other explanation might be the true explanation okay so that is our approach to the class i will um see you soon